Today's topic is first come first serve CPU scheduling algorithm. So what is CPU scheduling algorithm we have already discussed and what are the various times related to a process that we have already discussed in previous video. I will provide you the link of that video in description box if you want to check out. You can check out the, uh, that video. Okay. Now see, CPU scheduling is basically what pick a process from the ready state and uh, give the CPU uh, allocate the CPU to that process that kind of thing is known as CPU scheduling algorithm to which process CPU should be allocated. Okay. Now for CPU scheduling there are many types of algorithm in this video I am going to discuss one that is first come first sir. So this is the simplest CPU scheduling algorithm. Okay. What is the funda in this algorithm? See in this case it assigns the CPU to the process which comes first as the name suggests first come first serve. Jo process pehle aegi CPU usi ko pehle milega. Okay. Pehle aegi means the process which comes in ready state first okay in ready state that process would be allocated to cpu fine so that is the simple funda of this algorithm and the mode of this uh, algorithm is non preemptive now what does that non preemptive means you see two types of cpu scheduling algorithms are there one is preemptive and one is non preemptive now what does preemptive means if a process is running in the CPU, then that process can be forcefully removed from the CPU and CPU can be allocated to some another process that is known as preemptive CPU scheduling algorithm or you can say preemption. And what is it, this non preemptive scheduling algorithm in this case, once a process has been allocated to once a CPU has been allocated to one process means one process is running right now, then that process cannot be removed from the you know from CPU okay until its termination only thing is if the process voluntarily wants to exit from the CPU means it has been terminated it has been it has finished uh, its uh, process uh, its execution then it can uh, it can terminate from the CPU. This topic is first come first serve CPU scheduling algorithm. Okay, now what is CPU scheduling? Uh, what is CPU scheduling? We have already discussed in previous video, and as well as the time, various time related to a uh, process that we have already discussed. If you want to check out that video, I'll provide you the link in description box. You can check it out. Okay, uh, so basically, CPU scheduling is what just picking a process from the ready queue and alloc uh, then and give the uh, CPU to that process, or you can say allocate that CPU to that process. That is known as scheduling. To which process CPU is to be allocated? Okay, that is CPU scheduling. Now, uh, many types of CPU scheduling algorithms are there. So today, I am going to discuss with you first come first serve CPU scheduling algorithm. So the simple funda of this algorithm is it assigns the CPU to the process which comes first, as the name suggests. First come first serve. The process which come first in the ready queue, that process, the CPU uh, is to be assigned to that process first of all. Okay that is the funda and it is the one of the simplest CPU scheduling algorithm plus is it is non preemptive CPU scheduling algorithm. Now what does this non preemptive means? See two types of CPU scheduling algorithms are there one is preemptive uh, preemptive and one is non preemptive. So in non preemptive see uh, if a CPU has been assigned to one particular process then that process hold the CPU until its termination or you can say until it reaches to a waiting state or blocked state. You cannot forcefully or the operating system cannot forcefully remove that process from CPU. Okay, but in preemptive sh uh, scheduling algorithm, the process which is running in the CPU right now, that process can be removed forcefully from the CPU. Okay, and then CPU can be allocated to some other process maybe based on some time quantum or priority or something like this okay we will discuss this uh, in uh, detail later now this is non preemptive cpu scheduling algorithm once a process has been assigned to cpu you cannot forcefully remove that process from cpu but see that process can itself exit from the cpu when it terminates or when uh, that process wants to do some io operation, operation then that process itself can exit from that CPU can uh, can you know uh, leave that CPU okay but we cannot the operating operating system cannot forcefully remove that process from CPU 
okay now let us take this example with the help of this example we are going to discuss first come first serve scheduling we have five processes arrival time of every process is given and this one is the burst time of every process process or you can say it is the cpu time now this burst time is what that particular process needs how many unit of time to complete its execution okay that is maybe two unit and arrival time is means uh, means what at the time uh, you know uh, it is the time at which the process arrives in ready queue okay now see why this scheduling would be required if in ready queue we don't have any process then obviously we cannot schedule cpu would be idle at that time and if only one process is there suppose p1 is there only one process has been arrived in ready queue then the decision is what only we can assign the cpu to this p1 but problem would be there at the same time when we have more than one process in ready queue at that time to which process cpu is to be cpu is to be allocated okay and that that decision will be taken care by this algorithm on the basis of this rule jo pehle aayegi ready queue mein the cpu would be allocated to that process okay now check out to solve this kind of uh, you know numericals on cpu scheduling first of all you have to draw gantt chart if you are able to draw this chart properly then you can say that almost 90% work has been done okay now we are see we are taking the time uh, like this 2 0 uh, to something like this we are not taking the exact time like at 10:30 or at 11 or 11 o'clock or something like this okay this is the relative time okay now you have to draw a gantt chart and we will start the working of the cpu from time 0 assumption is that would be started from zero fine now you have to check at zeroth time is there any process that has been arrived in the ready queue yes we have one process because arrival time of p2 is zero then no doubt is there any other process no no one then no doubt cpu would be allocated to p2 and for how long cpu is to be allocated to this p2 check out the burst time or the cpu time that is only one unit so for one unit cpu would be allocated to this p2 see here the assumption is uh, no process would be required any io operation to perform any io device okay only the requirement is cpu fine now p2 has done with its execution now p2 terminates okay the state of p2 is now terminate it has been terminated now check out at 1 now time is 1 is there any other process which has been arrived arrival time of this is 2 2 3 and this has been done 4 so at time 1 we don't have any process in ready queue then we cannot schedule any process then see next process will come at 2 so till 1 to 2 cpu would be idle because we don't have any process so now check out at 2 which process is there one one is p1 and one is p3 two processes has been arrived but the rule is it assigns the cpu the process which comes first now you have to check out kaun si process pehle aayi hai but we cannot say anything because the arrival time of both the processes are 2 and 2 same then if arrival time is same this condition arise then you have to check out you you will go with the order of writing of these processes कैसे इनको लिखा गया है सी पी वन हैज बिन रिटर्न बिफोर पी थ्री सो वी विल टेक पी वन फर्स्ट सो पी वन वुड बी एलोकेटेड टू द सी पी यू एंड फॉर हाउ लॉन्ग टाइम पी वन रिक्वायर्स ओनली टू यूनिट ऑफ टाइम फॉर इट्स कंप्लीशन फाइन सो हेयर द टाइम वुड बी फोर बिकॉज एट टू पी वन हैज बिन असाइन टू सी पी यू इट टेक टू यूनिट ऑफ टाइम देन टू प्लस टू इज फोर नाउ पी वन हैज बिन टर्मिनेटेड नाउ at 4 see at 4 in ready queue how many processes are there p4 has been arrived because at 3 p4 has been arrived p5 has been arrived at 4 so in ready queue we have p3 we have p4 and p5 
Now, CPU will be allocated to which process which has come first. Now, out of these three, the arrival time of which one is less that is this one two. So, this would be allocated to P3 and P3 would take three unit of time for its completion then here you will write 4 plus 3 that is 7. Now, P3 has been terminated fine. Now, we have only two process P4 and P5 check out the arrival time this one is less than 4. So, P4 would be there for how long time for 5 unit of time. So, 7 plus 5 is 12. Now, at last remaining is P5. Now, here is 12 plus burst time of this one is 4 that is 16. So, this is the gain chart for this uh, you can say for these processes. Okay. Now, See this FC first come first serve algorithm uh, use what which data structure Q data structure okay for its execution. Now sometimes they ask you uh, the waiting time of these processes or you can say turn around turn around time or average waiting time average turn around time response time find such type of questions can be asked. So in this video we will discuss everything. Now first of all we will find out the completion time. If you do not want to find out then it is ok, you do not have to write this one without this you can also solve this numerical, I will tell you how. See what is the completion time at the time, the time at which the process has been completed has, uh, has gone to the terminated state. Now for P1 at what time P1 has been terminated check out P1, P1 has been terminated at time 4 fine. So 4 is the completion time of P1 for P2 it is 1, for P3 it is 7 completion time, for P4, P4 has been terminated at 12 and P5 at 16. Okay. Now next is you have to find out turn around time. Now what is turn around, uh, turn around time? We have already discussed in the last video, see this time is this one, this one was arrival time when the process comes into ready queue, then it go to running state and then it go to the terminated state. So, here we have completion time. So, this time from the arrival time to its completion, this total time is known as turn around time. So, you can say completion time minus arrival time that is known as turn around time or in other word if you want to say then turn around time would be waiting time plus burst time because after arrival and before completion here the process at some time process was waiting and at some time it was executing its burst time. So, it is combination of both waiting time plus burst time fine. Okay. Now, check out the turn around time completion time minus arrival time completion time for this is 4 arrival time is 2. So, turn around time would be 2, this one is 1 minus 0, 1, 7 minus 2 that is 5, 12 minus 3, 9, 16 minus 4 that is 12. So, this is the turn around time. Okay. Now, check out the waiting time. How waiting time can be calculated through this waiting time would be turn around time minus burst time that would be waiting time of that process fine because turnaround time is combination of both the times waiting as well as burst time. So, if, uh, if the, from the total of uh, this one if you remove the burst time then remaining is what waiting time of that process. Now, waiting time would be turnaround time minus burst time turnaround time is 2 see burst time is 2 2 minus 2 0 1 minus 1 0 5 minus 3 2 9 minus 5 4, 12 minus 4 that is 8. So, this is the waiting time. Now, sometimes uh, they can ask response time. Now, how response time is to be calculated? The time at which uh, the CPU has been allocated to a particular process first time, see first time, okay? that is response time after the arrival of that process means a process has been arrived that process is in ready queue and the time when the process is to be then CPU is to, CPU is to be located to that process first time fine. One thing is 
when as well as the process arrives cpu is to be allocated to that process at the same time then maybe response time is what zero only and maybe sometimes the process has to wait in the ready queue for some time and after that cpu is to be allocated to that process okay so check out the response time is what check out for p1 at what time cpu is to be allocated to p1 at time 2 first time first time at time 2 and when p2 uh, has been arrived the arrival time of p2 is 2 so it means as uh, when whenever this uh, this uh, the process comes in the uh, ready queue at that time only cpu has been allocated to that process means 2 minus 2 that is 0 only so response time is 0 now check out for p2 at what time cpu has been allocated to this p2 first time pehli bar at time 0 0 and arrival time of p2 is 0 so response time is 0 minus that is 0 only for p3 see for first time at time 4 cpu has been allocated to this p3 at time 4 and uh, the arrival time of p3 is 2 so p3 uh, was in waiting state for 2 seconds 4 minus 2 that is 2 okay and now for p4 say 7 at 7 p4 uh, cpu has been allocated to p4 p4 uh, first time and p4 has come at time 3 so 7 minus 3 that is 4 for p5 it would be 12 minus 4 that is 8 and in another term you can say in non preemptive scheduling algorithm waiting time and response time would be same always same but that is the case when scheduling algorithm is non preemptive here you can see waiting time and this one is response time both are same okay now sometimes they can ask you what is average waiting time so how i i guess everybody know how to calculate average waiting time and average turnaround time you can do what total of this turnaround time and divided by 5 total of this waiting time and divided by the number of processes number of processes are 1 2 3 4 5 so divided by 5 so this is how you will get average turnaround time and average waiting time so this would be so average waiting time would be 5.8 and average waiting uh, sorry average waiting time would be 2.8 and turnaround time would be 5.8 okay now there are some advantages and drawbacks of this algorithm and as well as <coughs> we will also discuss the convoy effect see what is the convoy effect in fcfs in the next video so i'll see you in the next video till then bye bye take care